Let's play a game. You know you're like the 10th guy to try this, right? It never works out for the dipshit in the mask. Hello and welcome to YCFT. In this special Monday edition, I've got to bring this out Monday now, we're doing a quick review, spoiler free review, of Scream 6. This year, Sam is in the outfit. I think if anyone remembers, if anyone saw our Scream 5 outfit, I was wearing the ghost faced outfit. So we've gone very, uh, I suppose for Scream 4 here, very Scream 4 with who is in the costume. Well, I'm going to say Sam being in the costume is no hint towards who may or may not be the killer in Scream 6. It's purely her turn. It is indeed. It is indeed. <laughs> I can barely breathe in this thing. Do you want to, do you want to take it off? I might, I might take it off now. I should also say as well, I do really like wearing the costume, but... I would, I would be the shittiest ghost face ever. Yeah. <laughs> How long this thing is. You are the shortest ghost face killer. I am, I am the shortest ghost face killer. Yeah. Not by much though. No, Jill's, only, Jill's only like two inches taller than you. Yeah. And then Amber in Scream 5 is like not, like a little bit taller again, but not by much. Yeah. I'd have to ask if they did this in petite. Yeah. Well, you, you also pointed out that any killer in the outfit, obviously usually it is a, ma a male stuntman wearing it, but there have been films where a woman has been the killer. As soon as you put that on, you realise, like, they must have been wearing chest compressors or something. They must in, have had to wear a chest binder. In the film logic. Yeah, because, like, yeah, it's, it's obviously a dude when, you know, in, like, the... Most of the time when you see when you see Ghostface, it's always a stuntman. But generally, yeah, you, cu you couldn't really have a lady, a, lady, a lady do this. Yeah. For two obvious reasons. Yeah. So, so yeah, we... <laughs> I'm, I'm the shit Ghostface. <laughs> We have seen Scream 6. You saw it first night it was out. Yep, we did. And to be honest, we're gonna, I'm just going to put my cards right on the table. I, I fucking loved it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it completely blows Scream 5 out of the water. Completely. Yeah, I agree. And I agree. I think it's... Uh... It's not without its faults. I mean, what movie isn't? But also, I'm not... I feel like we need to get past the point of saying, well, it's not going to be... It's not better than the first one. Like, we know. We all know... It's not going to be yes. better than the first one. Yeah. But this film tries to be different. It's well, different it right up until it isn't. But I had so much I, fun in yeah. this film. I had a grin on my face, I think, literally from like two seconds in because of the opening scene. And obviously, like, no real spoilers. But yeah, the, this isn't a spoiler free, a free yeah. review. So just for clarity, we're, we're going to talk about some specific plot points some character arcs but obviously we're not going to talk about we're not going to reveal who Ghostface is we're not going to reveal yeah. the motives but we are going to be talking yeah. about some things concerning the story we aren't going to confirm whether the killer is male or female whether there's one or multiple yeah um, that we we think has to be experienced there's two there's enough spoilers yeah out definitely. already in fact, actually i haven't seen too many online but i know now it is out there it's out there. It's gonna, you know, it's gonna explode at yeah. some point sooner or so later. So we don't, we don't want to add to that. I think this is type of film. The the benefit of any scream film is yeah. The re it's trying to work out who the killer is. It is, but I will when say there was, when I heard there were spoilers online leading up to it, I was terrified. I deleted Twitter because I yeah. didn't want to have it spoiled for me going in. Yeah. Like I Spider Man No Way Home spoiled for me but on the way on the way in. That was terrible. Yeah. I wasn't even there for that, and I that really felt for you. Yeah, but yeah, like literally from two seconds in, the the opening of this of this particular screen film, oh, I had the biggest grin on my face, and I think I was like I was clutching onto you because I was the adrenaline in in me was just like, oh my god, that was so good, that was so good, and it's... I don't think it ever came off my face. No, the <laughs> opening because that's one thing I'd heard going into it, is that this the opening, shocking something had never been done before, and. It starts off and I'm kind of like, oh, I can't see what's too different about it. Then I'm like, oh, 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 oh okay. okay. And then, I, yeah, I think I pretty much grinned throughout the rest yes. of the film. The core four, which they actually have, the they, they have a name. They are the core, the core yes. four. Uh, Sam, Tara, Mindy and Chad. Yeah, I... Returning from screen if anyone five, was nervous, If anyone was unsure on the Carpenter sisters in the last one. Oh. Melissa, what's her last name? Barrera. Barrera and she General Ortega. Sam. They, Melissa especially, as Sam, she is the heart of this film and she does kick ass. Like, if you were unsure of them in Scream 5, 
Yeah. You'll love them by yeah. the end of this film. I say they are just the driving force. They are the emotional center of this film. They, they, they really, really are. And I think... General Ortega has more to do. Yes, yeah, she does. Well, she's she not has... confined to a hospital bed for the majority no, of the exactly. time. No, exactly. No, exactly. And the two of them play off each other really, really well. But yeah, I think... I think I said, I said this to you right after we came out. For, for people that weren't maybe sure of Scream 5 or didn't really know what to make of the new characters, because Scream 6 is now here, you kind of have to look at them both in tandem with each other. Because clearly Tyler and Matt, the directors, writers... Yeah, the radio silence team. Ra- the radio silence team. They obviously came into Scream 5 with a clear trilogy in mind and with the idea that the characters that they were going to introduce in Scream 5 were going to have a continuous arc with these people. And I said, so what is set up in Scream 5 really kind of hits home in, in Scream 6. Like, we see a lot of the trauma that the two sisters and the other surviving characters have gone through. We see the conspiracy theories that have arised online about the Carpenter sisters. And, you know, in obviously... In particular, Sam. In particular, Sam, because now it's out. She's related to the Loomis family. You know, her dad was a murderer. Her grandma was a murderer. It's like... So that that comes into play a lot. The overprotectiveness of Sam for Tara, that comes into play. A little bit of friction between the sisters. Mm-hmm. Um, but Sam kicks ass in this film. It's a very... I think Melissa Barrera, she has a lot more stuff to do and a lot more we are, emotion now we are, to, to it's show. Established, we know these characters. Yeah, you can, for they sure. Can just grow on, they can just grow on it. Absolutely. And I'm now like just as comfortable with these characters as I was with like the original. I am. Free- I am. The, That's a testament to the to the like, writing. Obviously, Scream Five or Scream Twenty Twenty Two. It's Scream Five, <laughs> everyone. It's Scream Five. Yeah. Obviously, that was very much mirroring a lot of the original film because it was a requel. Yeah. We are now into franchises. We are now into the franchises. And but it's pretty obvious that even going into it, this was going to mirror Scream Two in a lot of ways. Yes. And it does, but I would say this film very much. Up until a certain point, is just doing its own thing, but is definitely paying homage to Scream Two, and does make me think. Like it's obvious, it's mirroring for me. It's mirroring the uh, new the David Gordon Green Halloween trilogy. Look at Ghostface's mask in this one. Mm, like, mm-hmm. We'll be able to see it, but I've got the Michael mask from Halloween Kills there, the decrepit mm. mask, like a forty year old mask, and I I loved it. For yeah. me, it helps make him stand out, but. Rightly or wrong, like I, I don't know if it's going to make people annoyed. I saw kind of a lot of what they did in Halloween Kills here as well. Just because Halloween Kills also took a lot from Halloween 2. Mm. This takes a lot from Scream 2. Mm. But more like, not plot points, just certain aesthetics and mm. mm-hmm. re- lot of references. Yeah, I think I see what you mean. So it makes me think, for the third one, are we going like Season of the Witch with that trilogy? Are they going to take something from Scream 3? From Scream 3, yeah. There's... there's- Definitely, it's not even nods. There, there are just kind of, I don't necessarily know how to describe it, but well, it's that, so many, they're at the same college. So many, yeah, so many instances where Scream Two is just kind of outright, like acknowledged within within the story. And there's even a moment with Mindy, who you know is the film buff and obviously related to to Randy. She's she's his niece, and she. Talks about, you know, how Randy was, was killed. Um, you know, he was, like, thrown into a van and he was, you know, murdered in broad daylight. And we get scenes that kind of play out similarly to that in this. Or, you know, like, yeah, nods to, to yeah. Scream 2. Very, very big, nods, loud but not and clear a, nods. Not being predictable. Yes. Which I really like. The yeah. setting of New York, I really like. This is basically Ghostface takes Manhattan. Yeah, But it's absolutely. far more successful than... J- like, we, we, I love that we actually got... There was a reference to Jason Takes Manhattan. Yeah. Well, the character was just outright watching the, the, the yeah. movie at some point. And the set, the change... Leaving Woodsboro... Because it's actually... Leaving Woodsboro not was Woodsboro, a good Not call. in Woodsboro, is it? Uh, Woodsboro's actually only been a main part in, like, three of the films. Yeah, pretty but much. But it was this new this new setting. I know that it was filmed in Vancouver, so kind of like... Because Jason Takes Manhattan was also mostly filmed in Vancouver. Yeah. But it, it feels... Like New York. New York, it's not like big and flashy like in a big budget film. It's ground level, yeah. back alleys, apartment blocks. From the chat I've heard, people that live in New York like how it feels yeah. like New York. Yeah, and it's for sure. part of a character. Even in the trailer saying that like it happens in like like Ghostface chases them into like a bodega. I think that's a, it's like a console bodega. We, whatever they call it's like it. It's like a little corner there. shop. 
It's very New York. Yeah. Oh, that is, that whole sequence is fantastic. Yeah, it's in the trailer. There are certain sequences in the trailer that have obviously been cut in a certain way. way. They are entirely different within, they especially out. the subway sequence is entirely different within the film. It is actually, yeah. It's, it's fantastic. This, that subway sequence, I need to watch it several times to get all the references. And yeah. You see in the trailer, there's a couple of people dressed as Ghostface because it's around Halloween. Let me know if I'm right here. One of the Ghostface masks had a slightly wider mouth, and I think it's a scary movie reference. Yeah. I'm like, I'm almost you could positive be right. that it was a scary, that it's the scary movie mask. You could be right. Yeah. I need I need that confirmed for me. But let's be fair, we're going to see this again. Well, I we it was literally the first thing that we said as soon as it was over was please can we see this again? Yeah. Because it was honestly fantastic. One thing we absolutely have to talk about is the, the main man himself. We do. We we really do for this, this one. Ghost this is a face. different ghost face. He is. He's not clumsy. No. He is. He is the because this film, like I'm sure most people have found out by now, is the bloodiest one so far. Scream Five was bloody. Yeah. This. This ghost face is violent. There's, there's a viciousness to this. Calculated. One. And yeah, there's a precision to the, to this ghost face. Mm. You know, like his movement. Uh, Roger L. Jackson obviously returns to voice the yeah. character again. That voice is obviously special for you being called Samantha. Yeah, yeah there's so many. Hello, mo- Samantha. Hello, Samantha. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's. Yeah. But I love is... this incarnation of ghost face. I love the more way he than moves. I did in Scream. Five. I totally agree with that. Yeah, it was one of the bit like even the, there was a still that was released in the lead up to to the movie, and it's one where Ghostface is kind of like mid run. And we've got like and the billowing of the yeah, cloak. but there's um it became like pretty like obvious to me in the bodega scene. We're gonna just carry on calling it the bodega scene with the shotgun and everything. And I know that that kind of caused had had a few mixed feelings for people. Like they don't they didn't know how they felt about seeing Ghostface with a shotgun and not his classic knife. Ghostface has always used guns. Like that is not a new thing. Yeah. Um but that whole sequence, the way yeah, there is a there's a the way he calculates his movements and the way he kind of hunts them down within yeah. the shop. It's very he's, he's precise. A predator in this. He's he's a threat. You know, like, Ghostface isn't tripping up all over himself. He's not, you know, falling over and whatnot. He is... This is a scary Ghostface. And so I fully respect and appreciated yeah. that. There's so many moments where, like... To me, this is the scariest Ghostface we've had probably since the original one. I'm yeah, I, I agree and I, with I'm that. I'm not sure where I put this one yet, but it's it's quite yeah, I, high. Yeah, this is high for Even me. Even with the problems... I'm not going to go into all my problems with it, but like, no. they are... They're nitpicks. We'll touch on they a are, few. They are nitpicks. Yeah. But... I had such enjoyment just sat, just being in yes. the cinema. We have the return of chases. There's moments where I'm like on yes. the edge of my seat and I'm like, yes, yes, that yes, is yes. what I want from these films. I've only, I think, I've only seen four, five, and six actually in the cinema. I've only seen five and six. Yeah. Uh, one thing I really like, like, obviously, Scream Five. It's all about recall, so back to only the first one matters. Even though there's clear reference to Scream Four with mm. uh, the sheriff. Mm. So you have the return of Kirby. Kirby is back. I really liked her in this, and it like, but this film pays homage to all the killers. Yeah, it does. It's, it gets obvious from the trail from the Shriver. They kind of leave stab stab as a presence in this, but it's not like screams, especially screams three, four, and five, which was stab central. Stab very. Like, look, they're making set, yeah. a scream three, making the third stab movie. Scream four, they want to make a reboot of stab. Mm. Uh, scream five. More yeah. stab. This it's because this is very much a sequel to Scream Five. So stab is present, but it's not the driving force of the plot, and I'm so no. happy about that. This isn't about the movies. This is the true crime element to it. This is about the killers. It is, and it, it's. A, I think it's the first one where they've literally gone through all the killers. Yes, because we see. Yeah. Obviously, we see all their cloaks in the in the shrine, the museum. Yeah. All the masks have different amounts of wear on them depending yeah, on how old sure. they are, and I'm like. I love that. I, I love really love that. Just acknowledging all the killers that came before. Yes, I I totally agree. And and with that, I think we have a return of the the mystery and almost like a detective story in in Scream Six, which I really really appreciated because there's the there is a, a very heavy police presence throughout Scream Six. Um, obviously we've got a few new characters introduced and we're not, not necessarily going to talk about who does what and what role yeah. and, and whatnot, but 
trying to figure out who the fu- who the, who Ghostface is. You know, it's not just Sam. It's not just Tara. There is an active investigation happening here. Um, and I really, really I like the, love the simple that. Simple things like I really, oh really yeah, like they've that. involved the authorities. Yeah, exactly. Well, I <laughs> think at one point yeah. it's even you know the F- the the FBI is is you know brought in to to try and help yeah. them out. And yeah, I I really like the return of that. You mentioned that there's a return of the chases, which we didn't really get a lot of in Scream Five. The classic chase sequences. The suspense in this one is amped up in a way that was kind of absent in in the last yeah. one. And I I did really like Scream Five, but Scream Six like. I think a lot of people are talking about it. There are so many sequences in this one where you are literally like, oh my God. You know, you feel like you need to hold your breath. You are, you're sweating with these characters. Like, it, it, it's great. It's, it's so well done. And I think the directors, especially Matt and Tyler, they are very good at introducing, but also exploring character arcs. Mm. In, in, you know, in what's in like the films. arc that Sam goes through, especially it's really is. good. And I, I really want to know what they're going to do, yeah, next. Well, I was, they have announced Scream 7 already. I was one of those people months ago that was a, a bit put out when I heard that Neve Campbell wasn't going to be returning in Scream 6. I was, I was one of those people that was like, no, we can't have a screen film without Sydney, they need to include her in some way. Yeah, it was, I was, I'm. I would love her to make a return to the franchise. Oh, I think she will. But I think I've, I think I said this in our Friday videos. Friday survived for so long because it wasn't tied to yes. a core set of survivors. And realistically, if the Scream franchise is going to go on in the long run, it had to eventually separate from the core cast. Yeah, I I do agree and with that. And now the circumstances of her not coming back, she has still said apparently she is still open to return, and they yeah. still want her to return. Yeah. But I didn't actually miss her in this film. Neither did I. And I was not expecting that. I thought that Sid would be a presence that I would feel like, you know, she's not there. Where is Sid? It helped that we had Gail. Yeah. It did. Yeah, it did. But I think, again, it's a testament to the writing that we're now so invested in the Carpenter sisters and the core four that actually to have Sid in the film it would have very much felt like she's just clearly kind of shoehorned in. Even even with Gail, which who of course, you know, makes a return. Obviously we're in New York, we know yeah, that's where Gail lives. It makes now. sense for Gail to be there. Yeah. And you know, Gail's doing what she does best. She's reporting the news and whatnot. Um but even Gail's arc in the story, it's it's not necessarily overused and I don't think she's underused. I think there's maybe different pools of opinion on that, but for me it was just like the right amount of Gail. Because I think to include her, you know, any more probably would have been a bit overkill, a little bit. But Gail, in the scenes that she's in, steals the yeah. steals the scene. She does like Courtney Cox is amazing in this. You know, like the the bitchiness Co- is back and it's the Courtney sass Cox, is back. Isn't it? It's not a spoiler to say that you know we know she gets a phone call from Ghostface, and that entire sequence is incredible. I think that's probably one of my favorite phone calls throughout yeah. the whole franchise like the the level of vitriol that she a, hurls at this guy it's such a strange thing that they amazing. all talk they all talk to Ghostface with a familiar familiarity yeah even though it is always a yeah. different person i think that's something the scream series it's always going to not be able to go away because the killer is often talking to gail for the very first time yeah she's talking to someone that she's dealt with since the 90s yeah and it's such a weird yeah. Relationship that they have. Yeah, totally. I mean, Sydney is is mentioned throughout the film. Like, there are a lot of references to Sydney, which I really did appreciate. And I think one of my, again, like, one of my concerns going back to when the trailer was released is when we see the, the shrine and we see, you know, Taysom's outfit and we see Billy's outfit and all these artifacts related to the previ- to the other Scream stories um, is, oh my God, like, how amazing would it be if Sydney was there and Sydney was, you know, looking at her her best friend's outfit from 1996 or, you know, looking at her ex-boyfriend's bloody t-shirt from that time as well. It would have, there would have been so much like emotional resonance for Sydney to be there. But again, having said that, because we have other characters in that scene who have equally gone through, you know, their own shit yeah. with, with Stab and, and whatnot, that, that there's emotionality an- is still very yeah, much there. There's enough, there's enough there. there. Like, obviously, Gail has there's a lot of references to Dewey in there. Obviously, Kirby are... sees, like, Jill, obviously, Jill Sher, who was her best friend, her boyfriend, the, the knife that her own boyfriend stabbed her. There's enough there. The rest is just yes. for us to see. I think it would have been a great moment with Sydney 
there. But also the way Sydney's kind of Sydney's kind of done with, with it. She yeah, she is she's kind she's, of she is kind done. of done with it, yeah. And I think she would possibly just see the shrine as pathetic. I, I agree actually. I, I now thinking about it, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Whereas I Sydney's not the kind Kirby, for example, this is probably the first time she's in been... a, like twelve years she's yeah. encountered ghost faced artifacts. Yeah. So I think yeah. see I think it's still Really worked, and again, that think it works homage to well. everything that has came beforehand. Absol- there's a great yeah. attention to detail there. There really is. There's a um, there's a cool scene as well, a bit earlier on in the film, where again, police doing police things, and they've got you know one of those like cork boards up, mm-hmm. and they've got um, pictures of all previous ghost faces on there, and they've got the motives and you know like links to different people, and it's so cool to see all these faces. Yeah. Of all these ghost faces up on the wall, like we see I, Emma Roberts, we see Matthew Lillard, obviously. For some fucking reason, there's a still of Skeet Ulrich from the first film. Like, they couldn't just get a normal <laughs> photograph of Skeet. It's clearly a still. But anyway, yeah. it's so it's much like fun seeing still. them all together. Yeah. It's like, I don't even think it's as well. I, there's a nice throwaway line to Roman about the only solo ghost face killer. Yeah. A bit <laughs> yeah. ambitious. <laughs> Yeah, but also totally. we know in Scream there was originally supposed to be more killers, yeah. like more killers, but because of leaks. Yeah, I, yeah, that's and true. Whatnot. I've got to talk about some negatives that I do. Yeah, okay. I, I feel I don't have as much of a problem with the ending and the reveal as I feel like a lot of people do. Mm-hmm. I didn't mind. Actually, this is a negative. I think the motive is they go about their motive in a complicated way, but the actual motive is very simple. I'm not going to say what the motive is. No, but it is very. But simple. it's very simple, and I actually do kind of. I like that. I like a return to sit. To simplicity, even if the, everything around it is very yes. complicated. Yeah. The sheer amount of plot armor that characters have. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. Let's be fair. I had I kind of problems with certain characters surviving in Scream Five because this is a very violent ghost who's killed. There's some violent stabs. People just need to die. <laughs> Yeah. Are you scared to kill people? Yeah, I know, I but know. But at the same time, there's a lot of people that do die in this. There's a certain point where I'm like, I did actually roll my eyes at one point. I because had an I eye roll. Like, I had I'm an like, eye roll, but for a different how? scene. How? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I totally... That is my, that is my main problem. My main right. But at the same time, like the the actual stabs yes. and kills, they're very visceral. They hold on them. You see the twist, which just leads more into the... Yeah. How the fuck are you still alive? Sort of yeah. situation. So uh, it's like a double edged sword. I like seeing all these scenes, but I also want the consequences, but I also don't want char- these characters to die because I like them now. Right. So to, to just jump on that point as well about certain characters just <laughs> staggering <laughs> all like laws of physics Wait, running and off biology. After being, running, <laughs> running around survive. after being stabbed in the gut. Yeah, like 16 times or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, um, on that, I. I think if this was another film, and I think if I now wasn't as emotionally invested in the characters as I as I was in watching the, the movie, that would have been a huge criticism yeah. for me. You know, like, for fuck's sake, movie, just have the balls to kill off some of these characters. But because I adored the story, and because where we did get kills, they were so good, and the build-up to the kills were so good... I kind of can let it slide that they didn't kill off as many yeah. characters as as they did, or you know, they, like some characters clearly did survive. What is basically unsurvivable, I can get past that. And then to the end, I do agree to some extent with the um, with some criticism of the revelation of the the killer or the killers, um, because it's kind of like, oh right, yeah, it's. It's you. <laughs> it's 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 you. Okay, and oh, well, this as, is this is the every, reason. I feel like every scream since the first one has See, suffered right. this. Okay, I I again, I absolutely agree with that. Yeah. and I like your point about how it is a bit of a return to simplicity. I do appreciate that. I think it was more just like who, who the killer or the killers are is a bit ah right but having said that i've only seen this film once and my opinion could change over over time you know you need sort of time to, for a film to kind of sit with you and to reevaluate it but that is my main thing having said that i think that this is the best showdown of any finale since the first film mm. 
and I've I've really liked a lot of the finales, like the, the showdowns between the survivors and the ghost faces. Yeah. Like I've I've always really liked that. But this this for me is like second to the to the original. And yeah. I'm putting the original first just because it is the it's, original. Yeah, it's the original. But Scream Six, man, like it's extended, it is violent, it is brutal. It this is might brutal. it might be my favourite sequel. At this moment in time, I need to see it more. Yeah. I have, I, you know, I love Scream 4, but it goes, it's above Scream 4. It's better than yeah. Scream 4. Like, better than Scream 3, better than Scream 5. It's a battle between 6 and, two, six and 2. See, There's a lot I love about 2, but a lot I don't like about 2. It's, I find the films really hard to rank because... The, there isn't a bad Scream film. There That's isn't it. We are now bad... six films into this franchise. Yeah. And there isn't, even at its weakest, yeah. Scream 3, it's not a bad film. No, but... The, it's a, it's the most it's one of the most consistent horror franchises ever. That's the thing. It's like I I find trouble with ranking them because I'm I'm putting like my my favorites even though I know maybe they're not technically the better film but they are still my favorites of you know like above sometimes what I know is technically a better a better film. So it's like Scream 6 is arguably better than Scream 3 but I still fucking really love Scream 3. So I don't know how I'm going to rank them necessarily. But I would absolutely rank 6 above 5. I would for sure rank it above 4, which I think will potentially always be my my bottom. Even though I don't hate Scream 4, it's just for me, it doesn't do it for me If they got rid of the 2011's Instagram filter colour grade, would it have put it higher? It probably would have helped a little bit. There are some other issues with Scream 4. But Scream 6, I... I, I absolutely loved it like i yeah. i love this film to me, and i never builds, thought i'd say that without sydney in it it builds really well what they set up in scream five and yes. this is you could see scream five if you've only seen the first one i think to really appreciate scream six you need to see them all i agree with that and i do agree with that this now if it feels like a proper sequel also like other comparisons to scream two obviously in the world it's like stab yeah Stab two for them. The there was only a short gap in between five and six, just like there was a very short gap in between one yeah. and one and two. You know, the one of the big set pieces, obviously, throughout Scream Two was the theater. Mm. One of the big set pieces for this film is a very different type of theater, but a theater nonetheless, a movie theater. And I really like. I think that's a really subtle thing that I don't think a lot of people have picked up on yet. No, I did. My mind was blown when you made the. It's like, oh my god, yes. <laughs> And yes. it's, I just loved it also being in an old, an old, like the shrine being in an old movie theater. It's, I it really was, adored. That. Yeah, it was it was great. It was absolutely brilliant. Um, We're probably going to see this again, probably next week. The finale. Oh my god, the finale! Like I'm, I'm still on a bit of an adrenaline rush from watching the whole film. I, I truly thought it was great. So yeah, I think you meant you mentioned before that you had an eye rolling moment. Yeah. I also had an eye rolling moment, but for a very different scene. Yeah, uh, I'm going to guess is we had this discussion about how the characters have to explain things to us. Yeah, I th- yeah. this isn't a scream re- a specifically scream related problem. It's a problem with a lot of films in general. And I, I'm not someone that blames the uh, like Marvel films for the state of cinema yeah. because I actually enjoy a lot of them. I feel like from Guardians of the Galaxy onwards, so with James Gunn, and especially after for Ragnarok with Taika Waititi. Where that type of comedy where the funny part of the joke is somehow the explanation of the joke has weirdly kind of led to a situation where we have to be spoon-fed information rather than just being letting us work it out. Or if a joke yes. happens, we have to be told why that joke was funny. I can't wait for this to, this era to end. It's like, I yeah. like to think your average cinema goer. We are intelligent enough that if there is a joke, we can get the joke from the punchline, not the explanation. Yeah. I I feel like but it's, it's not, like I said, it's not specifically just a scream related no, problem. It, That's a big, it's not. Yeah, but I do think it's at some point in the franchise, it became I don't know what, where necessarily it started, but filmmakers in making these movies, the scream films, at some point along the way, thought, oh well, we need a moment where a character talks about the rules of filmmaking, the rules of horror movies, and obviously we yeah you know, we had it in the original with Randy, but it's kind of felt like it needs to be a staple of every yeah. film since then. Because Scream 2, and... it was between Randy and Dewey. Scream 3, yeah. it's a videotape of Randy. Scream 4, I get it, right? We're rebooting the franchise, so we need to take some things from the original. Yeah, All right, the... I get it. Scream 5, we're a requel. 
So we have to mirror a lot of things in the first one. I get it. Doesn't need to be in every film. The, the thing, I yes, it doesn't need to be in every film. And I think, especially in Scream 5... I maybe I don't know actually. Scream four, I can kind of let it pass Scream because five, I can. I give them. Trevor I, is talking about it in film class, isn't he? He's talking yeah. about the rules of horror films in a, in a literal film class. So I can kind of okay. There's context for that. Scream five, I kind of give it a pass purely because mm. mainly like because they na- they gave requels the name. Yeah. It started. It started with Halloween when you text chains up. I know uh, as a filmist today they just finished they've just wrapped filming on the exorcist yeah. people but they didn't before scream 5 they didn't have a name it was being called oh a direct sequel to the original a sequel that ignores the continuity there hadn't been a name for it yet they named it requel so now when people study film and like sequels reboots remakes yeah, I... when you get to requels it will dire you can pinpoint that name to scream 5 and yeah which is cool so that's like they've added some terminology to the genre which I... I can, i've got to give it props for i appreciate that i do appreciate that i think for me it was more just the setup of the scene none of it felt natural Na- yeah <laughs> it's like we've got p- friends don't talk like that I feel like other it, friends. it felt more natural in scream six uh, but also i think the dialogue felt more natural but the scene itself just kind of felt like this has just been plonked in yeah that was marvelous sure, with issue. scream seven coming i can't think what the next stage of it would be so what they could do in Scream 7 is just not have to... Oh, if they are going to have that conversation, just say, this is Uncharted Territories, anything, just yeah. who knows what could happen. That's yeah. kind of all it needs Yeah, because be. I think the thing is in, in Scream 6 especially, like in, in contrast to Scream 5 where we have Mindy talking about the rules of the recall and whatnot, in Scream 6 we outright have a moment where character... Like she's she's going through who it could be, who the main suspects are and why. Like telling the audience why we need to suspect each and every person sitting in this yeah. like little semicircle. And I think that that is not a scene that we would have had prior to Scream 4. I we don't kinda, think. Because it's, it's hinted at in Scream 1 that within the friends group of the joke that everyone, there could still be a motive there. But there, you're right, there isn't just kind of you most likely killed this person. Yeah, you're the new one. You're the slutty one. You're the one with the trauma. It's like, yeah, we kind of, yeah, let us, we, we kind of know this, but also let us, show us this. You don't just need to, like, hand it out, you know, spoon feed this information to us. It's like, we can figure it out. And I think it kind of goes back to that mystery thing, like the hankering of wanting to, for, for the screen films to return to a detective story or a mystery film. You know, like for us to be able to figure out the motives and who is suspicious and who isn't and and things like that, to figure out what connections other characters might have with each other, you know, via certain scenes or certain moments of dialogue, rather than just a, like a scene of, well, you're a suspect because of this. Yeah. Do you know, like, again, it's a, it's a small gripe, but I, I, if we don't get a scene like that in Scream 7, that's fine for me. I don't think we need it in every single movie. Yeah. You know, the rules of a horror film explained the characters know they're in a horror film we don't necessarily need to have the rules spelled out for us yeah. every single time but uh so yeah do you have any more i got no notes no notes no, <laughs> no notes. notes this is just raw this is just raw feelings. like emotion yeah and um, cl- loved it yeah we clearly love this film we're gonna watch it again we're gonna own it yeah there's a lot to enjoy there are, like i said there are nitpicks and there will probably be a few things that will annoy a lot of fans they just don't bother me really no. in this film. Like I'm, I'm the properly think of nitpicks. When I was sat there in my cinema seat watching this movie, I was fully into it. I was as well. And that can't be te- like no matter how many people tell in the future tell me, yeah. oh well, this was wrong, this was wrong. You can't take that experience away. This was a great cinema experience. It's a great cinema film. I, if you are a fan of the franchise, I'd ha- highly recommend you go and see it. One other point is it might not feel like it because of the trailer. Or even the way we've been talking about it. But there's a lot of comedy in this one. Yeah. Not like, ha ha ha, kind of, you know, Scream 3, like, campiness, like, slapstick almost comedy. But there is a lot of humour in Scream 6, which I don't think the trailer necessarily gives gives away. But that surprised me, and I absolutely adored it. Yeah. Really, really liked it. This is, it's a fun Scream There's, a, there's just a lot of really good character moments, and I, I love the connection of these 
before, have I? Jenna Ortega, for example, got to spend more time with her actual group of friends, which we didn't really get in the last film. Yeah. You know, they've might have been friends for a long time. I really like that. And obviously, they do have this bond of being survivors. Yeah, they do. Which obviously, a bond which they share with, like, not as strongly, but they have this, this bond with Gale and Kirby as well, because they are all survivors. Yes, ab- absolutely. Absolutely. Also, I like how they expand on the world. Like, they reference, like... Sam would know Kirby because they would have been at high school at the same time as so Kirby a bit, being a bit older. Yeah, so it's like yeah broadening the world. Bringing brand new characters in, in Scream 5, that has to be a reason why everyone would know each other. Yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 I liked it. I really liked it and I can't wait to see it again. I cannot wait to see it again. As I say, like it's above Scream 5 for me, for sure. It's for sure above Scream 4. Um, and I, I it's know... One set, it's in my top three. The, this, I, I know right now it's in my top three. This this is one that I will rewatch a lot. I think yeah. when, I'll when I get it, it more on, than Scream Five. Yeah, I, I'm the same. I'm so the I've same. only watched Scream Five. It's fair, it only came out just over a year ago. Yeah, I, we've seen it a few times. To be fair, I've I should be fair. I've watched it. I've watched Scream Five three times. Yeah, one time I think you just had it on as background. I think I just had it on the background. Yeah, but it's it is a really good film. I just think that Scream Six is a bit more fun. Yeah, in and a I, nutshell, I am extremely excited also like there's a good chance because Scream 7 is going to start filming later this year so we could get Scream 7 next year <laughs> like how long has it been since we'd get sequels to horror movies a year after we could get a trilogy in three years yeah I know Ty West would do like yeah two films out in the same year and the third one comes out potentially later this year yeah I love that I can be like oh I don't have to wait two or three years for yeah. a sequel next year we could see Scream yeah. 7 I'd like I'd... and that I it excites me. It excites me. So also, there's not a drop in quality. If anything, the no. co- this one felt like a more polished film than Scream 5. Proud to be a Scream fan because they are yeah. delivering the goods unlike Jeepers Creepers. That's just not. <laughs> right. That Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, usual programming will resume on Thursday. Yeah. Well, Thursday or Friday. I haven't decided what day I'm going to put out yet. We'll just see what we feel like, you know. Well, that is uh, Scooby-Doo and the Reluctant Werewolf. <laughs> yes. And um, David and I are probably going to look very different because continuity is just shot for shit at the minute. (laughs) So, you know, there's that. (laughs) We're actually about to record, right after this one, we're recording a subscriber special for you guys. And you'll get that next Monday. So, exciting stuff coming up in the next few weeks. Go see Scream 6. Yeah, please go and see Scream 6. So good. It's great fun. So good. And, right, we'll catch you later, guys.